midterms to my writers at the end, which is what I tend to do with most of my actually. I tend to work with my midterm writers. Here are the first question somebody should have said, what do you do with the water on first or the past one first? Put a grey going on. Yeah. Fairly dark, messy colours, it's going to just disappear into a, almost a blob of mess at first. Um, but I'll soon bring it back again. Different ways of working, different horses for courses. Now the brushes that I'm going to be using, um, you watercolourists will know most of them. Often I work over a coloured ground, so I usually keep a light coloured um, watercolour pencil in as well because I work over dark grounds and so on. If I was doing something like this um, in, in acrylics down there, I might well have a dark ground, deep purple ground or deep blue ground and work over it so that that blows through. Um, the rake brushes, which we're going to use today, and you can get cone brushes as well, which are much finer. Combine them by the set. Um, toothbrushes are also useful for texture. Most of the time I use a large Pro Art Oval Right. I want to show you what can happen with water. Right, this is going to quite surprise you, I reckon. But, look how fluid it becomes. Whack the water on, you can put more than one coat on, we can put one coat over another, we can wet back into it whenever we want, it will, it will re-wet. You can start to get textures straight away with the edge of the trees here. And I'm going to work into this, and I'm going to make it much, much stronger than this. Up through here, the light bit first, but it flood, and it's so fluid, it's almost like oil paint. Look, I can go in there with my fingers and I can move it around. It's a lovely, fluid, liquid way to work, and you wouldn't expect it to be that. So, anytime I want, I can go back in with the brush, I can work it with the brush, I can texture with the brush, and that's the point. Whereas with big pastels, it's quite hard to do a fine line, isn't it? I can now draw into this whenever I want, look, with a brush. Pastel, and it drives like pastel. Remember that pastel works by the small grains of pigment reflecting light. If you fix pastel with fixative, it kills it. I don't use fixative at all anymore. It knocks that brilliance of the whites down. As long as you've shaken your pastel well off, as long as you never lay them face down, Make sure that all the dust is clear. Okay, gradually you might get a bit coming off onto the bottom of the mount, but make sure you use double mounts. Make sure that uh, you leave them on their backs. I'm going to deliberately come back with a second coat of grey. I want that a little bit heavier yet. And even now I can start to work that grey into here. I can start to put the lights over the darks. And that's still damp, isn't it? Look at this grassy area here. Let's take that real dark blue that I have. And I'm going to wet this dark blue area. There we are, it's fairly wet now. Take my, my um, rake brush, wet it a bit, and I can start to make grass effects immediately. Look. Or I can use the tip of that brush or a round brush to come in there with bigger pieces, and I can drag those out. So already we can do quite, quite, quite fine, quite fine and detailed work. But I tell you, very, very dark. Um, I'm just going to go to my medium tones at first and gradually work these darks up before I come back to the lights. The reverse is, of course, a sunrise or sunset when you get the warms in the background and the cools in the foreground. But normally it's warm, cooler, cooler, cooler. Normally it's in focus, more out of focus, more out of focus. Like making a cake. Every rule is there to be broken. There's not one rule for everything. I don't come and say, this is the way to do it. I've come here to say this is a way to do it. Watch, hopefully you'll enjoy, you can try. And hopefully you'll gain something from this. Back into the deep blues. Use the water again until I'm happy that I've got an undercoat that I want. And be aware of accident. A lot of watercolour, and again, we've got, I'm sure we've got some excellent watercolourists here, is done by controlled accident, isn't it? It's a funny word to use, but controlled accident. You know, we can use those cauliflowers at times even. If I get an accident happening in here that I like, I'm going to leave it. I don't want to be pedantic. I don't want to know how it's going to come out before I do it. I'll come down into there, right through into here. Coming into this, just touching it here and there to let the light reflect on the leaves. 
come down to here, I start to get the water in. I'm going to use vertical strokes first, deliberately to get the revealing of the reflection. I'm not going to use my horizontal yet. I'm going to just blend a little bit here with my mucky fingers, just to soften it up there a little bit, because I want it a bit brighter at the bottom. So I just touched it lightly, just so stunned by this mess. <laughs> When you first sketched it out, yep. and you put the first wash on, what did you just sketch it out with a pencil? Yes. Because the lines seemed to break through. I did this. Yes, it was a pencil. It was rather a hard pencil. I think you can see that still showing here slightly. But you could just do it with a, with a light pastel. I mean, I, if I'm working out of doors normally, I'll just use a, um, a light grey pastel or something and it just disappear. You know, well, it doesn't matter. No. Because I'm working from my lights as it is through to my darker colours. The water isn't getting that messy. And I'm not putting my lights on with the water. I'm putting my lights on afterwards. And strangely enough, even when I'm using those rollers, I hardly ever need to wash them. I might change them about every five or six colours. Or if I work right down from mediums to darks and then have to go back to a light, then I'll wash the rollers. With the pastels. What time's your tea? On the hour, is it? <laughs> Do you want to have tea now and then while that dries? That right? And then I'll finish this after tea or carry on? Okay, we'll take a break. Well, I will have a certain way, we'll have a break. You can see I'm starting to put in the highlights. Now, what I've done is something that might have seemed quite light at first. Oh, sorry, quite dark at first, will now seem lighter because I put some darker colours in. It's very deep purple. So now I'm, I've got to the stage where I'm playing with all of these highlights. As I said, I'm painting with light. I can suddenly come into here and I can say, oh, yes, I want my, my bits of sunlight catching here now into these. And I can do the textures. And I'm making marks about the thing I'm doing. Now, with your drawing, I'm not doing exact marks to this, I'm just doing marks about these things. Those marks are quite different to these marks, are quite different to these marks. I'm making them about epsilon, yeah. Uh, you can't help over the years some dust coming away, but storage in between tracing paper in the drawer, flat, upwards. Sending my post, tracing paper a roll, seems to be all right. Um, sending mounted works with glass more difficult because it does bash them and then you're going to get some dust going down. Can't be. Finger marks. You have to put, put cellophane over your work. As soon as, as soon as I mount my work, I cover it in cellophane. And that little bit of cream, although it hardly shows as cream, is different to this. And if I did the same with a very light blue to sparkle, if I can find myself a light blue, there we are, it will play against the, the pinks and the creams. And the cream. <coughs> so one colour playing against the other can even give a sparkle and ripple of water. When I'd done the waves and that, there's no pure white anywhere. That's a bit of fun. Let's use a bit of flash paint. Now this is a harder pastel. This is one of the inscribes. I just want to show you a bit of bright pink of this that we can get. Uh, we can get to these lovely warms if, if I need to go this far. Because now the paper is dry, it doesn't cut into it. <coughs> so I would use these now, but I would not use them with water to mix. That's what I wanted, that's what I was after. So I'm going to just drag those down and soften them a little bit between being hard and soft. My fingers are just touching parts of it, not all of it. And the gestural marks I'm making now for that moving water, quite different to the earlier <coughs> ones. The smoother ones here are quite different. Yeah, we've got to have fun. Painting has got to be, it's got to be fun. It's, it's not just for the money, don't you? To loosen up and just enjoy. And, I remember Hazel Soane's so and so the same, you know, on occasionally on watercolour challenge or something. Somebody can see if somebody's actually enjoying it. <coughs> um, and I mean, there come, comes a time when I almost forget you're there. If I'm, if I'm really enjoying myself doing a bit of painting, I'll just get going on this and I'm away. And five or ten minutes for you, so I don't need to do much more. And I for me, I'll have I'll have about, I'll have about, I'll have about, about done anyway. One colour comes into another. It's not. Blue sky, green grass, brown trees, blue water. The overall light is a blue cream, and I've got to bring that through everything. So I'm starting to bring some colours through into almost everywhere and other things. What do you think about focal points? I get a bit irritated about that, but the amount of 
over the years, I can think of four or five, but you haven't got a focal point in your picture. And you know, the, the picture's a great big X going up the river. You think, well, what the hell is that? And, um, I haven't particularly got it here. I mean, that takes the eye, what I'm leading through is back to here. I suppose about there would be focal, somewhere here on this little bit. Um, maybe there, yeah, that's about focal point, isn't it? Somewhere here. I don't want too much. It'd be nice if I had a little figure up there, actually. That's what I'm going to do. Put a little figure up there. I'm going to put a little figure just up here, just for fun. Yeah, somebody just standing up there. Probably a bit too much. I don't want it too much in the middle. Maybe a little bit more to one side there. Yeah, just lead up there. A bit more light on him. It's too dark. We'll just a bit of light on that figure there. That's better again. Little things like that that can just make a difference for me. This is vital. These little things now I've got to look at just to stand back and then get them right. Now stop. Yeah, I reckon I'm about there, don't you? It's just odd little things like that shape there is important. You see, that shape is important to me. That's oh, to find that left yeah, different from that left hand side. <laughs> And down here, a little more light perhaps, just, just to show that water there. I want that rippling water just coming through here, look. Little, little things, just a few little touches here and there. Just to kind of, uh, cool coming to start with now. Right, I'm going to say it. <laughs> yeah, okay, right, there you go. Enough. Well, yeah, at least everybody will have a time to have a So I'll have this up on YouTube in about a day or even tonight. Enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Something different, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely lovely.